live, getting results. This is News 6 at 6. Now it's a fireworks promise not met, but one city still got results tonight. An update on a fireworks fail that ended with a free show. Also tonight, a family lost in a lagoon on kayaks. How a paramedic made a brave jump to come to their rescue. First tonight, though, we are watching the tropics closely. This is News 6 at 6. I'm Matt Austin. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Von Anken in for Lisa. Tonight, Tropical Storm Gordon is dropping rain and bringing a lot of rough surf to a lot of Florida. This is a video from Delray Beach, which is south of West Palm. You can see the beach there is completely empty on this Labor Day. Not exactly the case on our beaches in Volusia County, at least earlier. So this is overlooking Daytona Beach. There was a good crowd out there earlier. They now gave people up. People have gone home, yeah, <laughs> because the rain rolled in. Let's check on that. Let's get over to meteorologist Samara Kokinos in for Tom tonight. So should we be concerned about this tropical storm, you, you know what? It, the only thing that we're going to be concerned about is the rain that this particular storm is bringing us here. And the majority of the heavy, heavy stuff is kind of already out of the mix. This is what it looks like on the tropical satellite and radar. And you can see all of this red here, the orange and red. Well, that's Gordon. You know, the thing about this storm is that it's still situated over southwest Florida and it's not forecast to come directly here. It's moving west northwest at 16 miles per hour with 50 mile per hour winds and it's going to move over the Gulf of Mexico and head toward the central Gulf Coast by late Tuesday, early Wednesday, possibly as a category one storm with up near 75 mile per hour winds as it makes landfall again Tuesday night going into early Wednesday. So this is definitely going to be something that we'll watch. Now earlier today we got a really good shot on the radar of the eye. Check it out. That was the eye of Gordon kind of fizzled out fairly quickly within an hour or so after we saw that well defined eye. Chief Meteorologist Tom Swirls was here with me when we saw it. But he's since left because, you know, it's Labor Day. But let's take a look here at the bands of rain continuing to funnel into central Florida. A lot of the heavier stuff has kind of tapered off a little bit. We're getting a break in orange parts of Seminole and even southern Brevard County. But northern counties and going inland a little bit still seeing some of that heavy rain. So. Yeah, definitely going to continue to see that rain at least through tonight, but it's going to be more like pockets of rain instead of widespread heavy rain. The clouds, they're going to stay locked in tight. We'll talk more about how the clouds and rain will impact the rest of your forecast coming up in minutes. Guys, see you then, Samara. Thank you to keep track of Gordon. Download our free hurricane tracker app. Our weather team is going to continue to update that app with the latest on the storm. Just search WKMG in your app store. Breaking news alert now, the Osceola County Sheriff's Office is investigating a shooting in the area of World Drive at I-4. This is not far from Disney World. They tell us two people are hurt in this shooting. We have some video from the DOT cameras. If you look closely, you can see yellow crime scene tape and a couple of cars pulled over sort of at the back of the screen there. We have a crew headed to the scene to get some more details from deputies. They just got there. Here's a live picture, in fact, from the scene. When they get some more details on this, they're going to let us know what's going on, and we'll tell you. Tonight, a heroic rescue story. Yeah, a paramedic jumps from a helicopter into a lagoon to help save a family. The family was kayaking when they got lost in Mosquito Lagoon. That's near Canaveral National Seashore in Volusia County. News 6's Vanessa Ariza spoke to the hero of this story. She joins us now live. So, Vanessa, this is a veteran on the job, but he says this was even a first for him. Absolutely, Matt. This guy has 13 years of experience under his belt, but he says, you know what? This was the first time that he'd actually jumped out of the aircraft and into the water. He says it is one to remember. He's happy that everybody is okay. Now, where we're at right now, this is where that family was able to finally get on dry land. And here, it's just about half a mile to a mile from where they were rescued yesterday. So much. It was quite a night for a family of four yesterday. A grandmother, her two grandchildren, and her fiance went out for what was supposed to be a relaxing day on the water. Instead, it ended with a rescue chopper and boat near Mosquito Lagoon. It was starting to get dark at dusk, so we had our night vision goggles on. Um, luckily, the one of the kayakers, the females, had her cell phone, so she was able to stay in direct contact with our dispatch. Matt Brunell and his partner were called to fly in to help with the search, along with FWC. Because of low tide, FWC wasn't able to get their boat close enough to the family. Ultimately, we had no other choice. We didn't want to leave, you know, especially with two small children. We didn't want to leave them out there all night waiting for the tide to come back up. 
So plus there was some bad weather coming in off the coast as well. Brunel's partner lowered the chopper to the water. About 10 feet up, he jumped. I was in the water the entire time walking through, like I said, from ankle to about uh, almost waist high water until uh, we got to the FWC boat. He pulled the family and their kayaks about a quarter mile to the rescue boat. He describes it as scary, yet exciting. Jumping out of the chopper and uh, uh, dropping through water, through shallow, dark water at night, um, not knowing, you know, sharks. I mean, obviously there's could be alligators and you don't know what's down there. I actually did step on a stingray. Thankfully, it was on the, the wing of it, so and I was wearing boots as well. And Brunel says if you are going to head out into the waters, try to make sure you know where you're going. If you're not too familiar with the area, like Mosquito Lagoon, he says it can be tricky. Try to bring a friend with you or possibly a map. He said also if you're going out late at night or in the evening hours, try to take a flare gun with you. And of course, the one thing that a lot of us can't leave behind are cell phones. He said this helped tremendously in yesterday's rescue, and it can help someone else if they do get lost if this happens again. Matt? Very interesting. Vanessa Ariza, thank you. And make sure that cell phone is charged. Yes. Developing tonight, a four-year-old boy is pulled from a pool in Ormond Beach. Volusia County deputies say the child is now at the hospital in Orlando. This happened at a home on Coquina Avenue, which is near US-1 and next to the Tomoka River. Deputies say the child nearly drowned after falling out of his float while swimming in the pool with his family. The boy's father noticed him at the bottom of the pool, pulled him from the water, and then started to save his life. The boy's condition, though, isn't known at this point. We'll keep asking. New details tonight in the Amber Alert issued for a missing two-year-old Florida boy. Investigators just released a sketch of the man they think took the child. So let's show it to you. Here's the sketch. They say Jordan Bellevue's mother told them a man who looked like this went by the name Antoine. She says he attacked her, left her in the woods, and took her kid. Also today, Largo police released details about the car the suspect is believed to be driving. It's a white Toyota Camry. It looks something like this. Jordan is two feet, six inches tall, weighs about 30 pounds. There's a picture of him. He was last seen wearing a blue shirt with the number 72 on it. Again, the man who took him is believed to be driving a white Camry. So if you see this or have any information, call Largo police or 911 wherever you are right away. One man is dead and two others are seriously hurt in an early morning crash in Daytona Beach. This happened along Beach Street. Police say the car ran off the road. You can see what's left of it there. It hit the street sign and two trees. 23-year-old Alex Thomas was killed. Two others were hurt and taken to the hospital. The neighbors say where it happened is a stretch of road that has had problems with drivers going too fast. Too many people come down here and they're going 40 or 50 miles an hour. These people, oh my God, they must have been going 80. Police say that they're still trying to determine who was driving that car, but criminal charges are not expected. The issue of race is taking center stage in the gubernatorial race in Florida. The man who could become Florida's first black governor is calling on his opponent to refrain from name calling. Democrat candidate Andrew Gillum says it's time to focus on the issues. This weekend, Gillum made his rounds on national media speaking about his opponent's Republican candidate Ron DeSantis' controversial comment, which some are calling racist. Yeah, well, first of all, I have to tell you, I do find it deeply regrettable. I mean, on the day right after uh, I secured the Democratic nomination, we had to deal with some of the dog whistles directly from my opponent. And I, and I, I honestly want to sincerely say this, Dana, uh, we can have a, uh, a challenge between ideas and around what we think uh, uh, the people of, of the state of Florida deserve. DeSantis campaign says DeSantis was referring to Gillum's policies, not him personally. Also this weekend, Gillum responded to robocalls mocking him, someone falsely identifying themselves as Gillum in those recorded calls, and they speak in a dialect which some are calling racist. They are now linked to a white supremacist podcast. Uh, we cannot afford to weaponize race. Uh, and to go to the bottom uh, of the barrel here. And honestly, people are going to take their cues from what their leadership says. And in this case, Ron DeSantis is the leader. And therefore, he's got to be very, very careful about how he uh, addresses uh, these kinds of, uh, of issues. I'm pleased to see them uh, decry those robocalls. Uh, but it's also important that Ron DeSantis take control and ownership of his own rhetoric and words. As you heard Gillum say, DeSantis' campaign spoke out against those calls. His campaign called them, quote, 
absolutely appalling and disgusting. Renters in Kissimmee could soon be getting help. Tomorrow, the city commission is set to talk about housing assistance. The city's looking at an amendment that includes multiple parts, including rental assistance for low-income people who are facing eviction. If approved, each person could get up to three months rent or five grand, which is ever is less. Also, the amendment would help low-income families with security or utility deposits for a new lease agreement. We'll let you know what happens. A fireworks fiasco on the 4th of July is now getting attention again this holiday weekend. Nadine Giannis is following the story. Well, Matt, Apopka's mayor says that the city of Apopka was let down on July 4th because a fireworks company failed them. It says they failed them again last night. What the mayor had to do to make sure residents weren't disappointed again after the break. It's a story that just won't go away. You're watching News 6 at 6, getting results for you on this Labor Day. We'll be right back. So tonight we have an update on a 4th of July fireworks fail. We showed you these pictures of fireworks that never really went off in July. The company hired to do this show did not come through. They promised to put on a show this Labor Day weekend, but as News 6's Nadine Giannis found out, a show did happen. The city says, though, the company's owner did not keep his word. She joins us live now to explain all of this. Nadine. So, Eric, the owner of that original fireworks company, Creative Pyrotechnics, told me himself that he was going to refund the city of Apopka the nearly $25,000 for that July 4th show and give him a free show for Labor Day. But the mayor says after he reached out for that refund and didn't hear back, he couldn't trust him. So they had to go with another company who didn't fail the city last night. It was a 4th of July fireworks show, but held on Labor Day weekend. Fireworks went off without a hitch. Which is more than what the mayor could ask for after the July 4th fireworks fiasco. These pictured fireworks showing they never went off. The owner of the firework company Creative Pyrotechnics admitted it was because of weather and staffing issues. And in DeBerry, the same company had issues with their fireworks getting flooded out. Days after, the owner of the company, E.J. Weppel, told us he would give the city of Apopka the nearly $25,000 back and a free show come Labor Day. It's very disappointing. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we've had a very good track record for the last 10, 10 plus years. And, um, you know, we want to do we want to do our best to, to make it up and make it right for everyone. But the mayor today said neither of those happened. When you quit, you know, reaching out to us about, you know, the, the makeup, uh, we said we've got to, this has got to go on without a hitch, and so we just didn't feel comfortable going with, with EJ. What was his response? Um, he didn't respond back. The city was forced to hire another company, which, because it was not on a high demand holiday, put on last night's show for a third of the price. Kind of cool to have the music going. It wasn't just fireworks, so it was, it was awesome. Disappointed Apopka residents from July, happy they weren't disappointed again last night. I mean, it's awesome that, Mar that Mayor Nelson was able to do what he did, but I mean, the, the original company should have done what they should have, they should have stood by what they did and, and helped them out. And so because the owner of Creative Pyrotechnics was so open to us last time, I called him this morning asking how the show went before I knew that he didn't do the show and he hung up on me. I then called him again after I talked to the mayor and he never answered again. As for the losses that the city had, the $25,000 plus the $9,000 to put on the show last night, the city said they had to file a claim with the Invent Insurance Company. Matt, Eric, back to you. So hopefully they got their money back and at least they got the show, Nadine. Thank you. Just a few months late. Yeah, you know, it's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, Samara is in for Tom tonight. And uh, so all of this junk we've been getting, all this rain today, mm -hmm. is basically, is that a part of this system? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the bands from uh, Tropical Storm Gordon have definitely That's... been making their way into central Florida. And the rain, the cloud cover kept temperatures down a bit today. We got up to 88 degrees. That's a few degrees shy of the average for this time of year. But you know what? We still have more rain on the radar right now and more on the way. So we're not quite done with all of the moisture from 
Gordon just yet. As we take a look at the radar this afternoon and this evening rather, you can see that we're starting to get a little bit of a break from the city beautiful down into Osceola in Brevard County, but we're still dealing with some rain over northern portions. I'm talking about to you in Volusia County, anywhere from New Smyrna Beach going up to Daytona Beach, still getting some pockets of heavy rain from time to time as these showers and thunderstorms continue to make their way west to northwest over inland zones and even Marion and Lake Sumter County still getting a little bit of that rain right now. Here's a better look at Gordon and you take a look here earlier today. We did manage to see the eye and you can see it form really quickly and then it fizzles out over about an hour after that. But still all of those bands of rain and moisture are going to impact the forecast until that system moves away. I'll show you that forecast track in a minute. I want to show you the clouds and rain forecast first. We start the clock at six. We roll to about eight. Notice we're still not done with the pockets of rain. There's still quite possible in between these little bits of breaks here that you do get by midnight. We're still dealing with some showers mainly along the coast, but some of that could spread inland impacting portions of uh, central Florida like Orlando, Sanford, and then getting closer to the coastline all the way up into Palm Coast and even Brevard County still getting uh, some of that rain overnight and early tomorrow morning for you morning commuters. By the afternoon, a lot of those showers again start to make their way inland, but notice that the coverage isn't as substantial as it was today, and that's because we're going to see some drier air start to move in as Gordon moves away. So your rain coverage is going to be 50% tomorrow. We're bumping that down to about 40% for Wednesday and Thursday. And then, of course, when we bump down the rain coverage, the heat, it definitely comes back. Here's a look at the tropics. We have this tropical wave right now, and it's situated off the African coast. As it moves over into the Atlantic, it does have about a 40% chance of developing into something tropical over the next five days or so. Meanwhile, this is Florence, still expected to stay over open water, but getting closer to Bermuda by the beginning of the weekend. Now here's Gordon. The Gordon's track is moving west northwest at 16 miles per hour with 50 mile per hour winds. The latest forecast does show that by late Tuesday night going into early Wednesday, once this system gets closer to the central Gulf Coast, it could be a category one storm with 75 mile per hour winds. Hurricane warnings are already in place for the central Gulf Coast, so it's something that we'll continue to keep an eye on. Here's a live view from our Daytona Beach Spoken Muns and Muns camera. Still some water on the lens of that camera. We're at 75 degrees and so mid to upper 70s across most of central Florida. By tonight, that's pretty much where we're going to stay, right at 75 with a few passing showers. Here's a look at tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Del Air Heating and Air Conditioning. 90s are daytime high with a 50% coverage of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Here's your pinpoint accurate seven day forecast. As we roll through the rest of your work week, guys, we're going to uh, take the rain coverage down a bit. So we're back to the lower 90s. And then as we ramp it back up just in time for the weekend, gotta love that, you'll be in the upper 80s uh, by day, mid 70s still by night. But not as bad as today, this weekend. Right, and not as bad as my hurricanes. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, but now that you I did. He won't, he won't because he's still got a game to watch I do. I've got to be very careful about the words I say. He's got an important one coming That's up. Right. Yeah, yeah. we are talking about the Seminoles and Hokies tonight. Call a little Monday Night Football on the College Gridiron. We'll have a preview. Plus, we will hear from the UCF Knights. Another honor for the star quarterback. No big surprise there.